Okay, um, we began yesterday by talking about the difference between fact and opinion, and we said that uh, statements of fact are verifiable through observation and experiment. So the statement that cell phone or students use cell phones between classes can be verified by me just walking out the door um, during class change and watching. And of course, very quickly I verified that that is true. Um, the statement that I posted in contrast to that, that high schools should allow students to use cell phones between classes is a statement of opinion. However, if you're presenting that statement of opinion, that argument claim, you're trying to prove that it's true to an audience. You're trying to persuade them. You're trying to convince them. Okay. How could you do that? So if I'm stating, let's say Southview High School, I'll, I'll state an argument claim. Southview High School should allow students to use cell phones between classes and during non-academic periods. How many people agree with that? I agree with it, by the way. One of them. Uh, how do you prove it? Prove to me that's true. It shows statistics that there's no mistake that the before and worked out positively for the students. Uh, define worked out positively for the students. Um, productivity increased in what? Jeff is trying to prove to me that that's true by actually getting me to believe another statement. What should we aim for in school? Higher grades. Higher grades. More efficient education, right? Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that adopting this policy will help me achieve that goal, right? What Jeff's doing is actually not proving through scientific experiment or observation. He's using logic. What he's trying to show me is that there's a connection between two statements, this policy statement and this goal. And he says, guess what? You have this goal, right? What do you want in school? You want efficient education. You're a teacher. You want higher grades. You want students focused. You want high morale. You want this day to be easier and your students to learn more. And I'm going to stand there and say, yeah, you're right. I do want that. That sounds cool. That would make my job easier and more successful. And Jeff's going to say, guess what? You adopt this cell phone policy, you'll get it. That's argument. That's logic. That's Jeff understanding me, who I am, what I want, and selling me on his policy. And if he can do that, then he can convince me that he's correct. I will show you this model of logic that does exactly, in almost mathematical format, what I've just described Jeff doing in selling me his argument. It's called the Toulmin model because it was uh, created by a logician. I can't remember his first name, and I can't believe that I'm blanking on his first name. Anyway, his last name is Toulmin. And this model is simple, easy to use. I will use my smoking ban example to demonstrate it. First of all, the model consists of three sentences. So you've already written one of them. Many of you have already written the first sentence. The first sentence is the claim. Toolman model contains three sentences. Claim, warrant, and grounds. The claim sentence is what you're hoping to persuade me of. In our case, with the claim of policy or the claim of action, it's the action that you're hoping that I will adopt. The warrant is the principle, the value, the goal that I'm hoping, or that, that you're hoping that I like, that I want. Jeff's trying to sell me on educational efficiency. Well, I'm sorry, he's trying to sell me on, sell me on a cell phone policy. He's appealing to my interest in educational efficiency to do that. The grounds is the evidence where he proves the connection between the cell phone policy and educational efficiency. And he even had a proof strategy developed. I'm going to look at other schools, other similar schools, and I'll draw analogies. Look, this school has adopted this policy. By the way, the policy I just described is adopted by Perrysburg High School. So it would be interesting to take a look at what their experience is like. And he can prove it. The United States federal government should illegalize smoking. Why? Well, the United States federal government should protect the health of its citizens, and if you illegalize smoking, you'll protect the health of U.S. citizens. 
a simple argument. But it's beautiful because if this is true and this is true, what follows? The claim is true. And actually, I could demonstrate that with a Venn diagram. I won't, but can. It's mathematically provable. But if this is true and this is true, that must be true. That must follow. I encourage you, by the way, when you go to college, take a logic class. It's a lot of fun. Um, I know you think, yeah, right, that sounds like fun. Uh, it's the application of really nice black and white, absolute, yes or no kind of math to thought. You start with that effective argument claim. In fact, um, your task for Thursday will be writing two of these. So you might even, as you're taking notes, start modeling your own by writing your claim in the, the claim position. So you start with an effective argument claim. We've proofed about uh, six or seven of them over the last two days. You might write yours down. If you need some help with yours, I'll be happy to give it. A Toolman model consists of what we might call terms. Um, Trey, would you mind? We're getting a lot of glare off. Could you close the blinds there? Just pull it toward Mitchell's way. And then I'll... Much easier to see. Thank you, Trey. We've already talked about the responsible party. That we're, we will call term A. I'm pulling apart this Toolman model, showing you its pieces. Term B is the action. What do you want the responsible party to do? So Dory wants state and federal governments to adopt the death penalty. <clears throat> Kelsey is asking for the Supreme Court to rule um, Obamacare unconstitutional. And then Trey is calling for the U.S. government as a whole to adopt nationalized health care. A responsible party and an action. You've got term A and you've got term B. What do you notice about the warrant? As a sentence, what do you notice about the warrant? By the way, this is a formula. I can construct these all day long. I'm sorry, term A is repeated, and I'm sorry, term A is repeated. Allison's correct. Sorry, I didn't have it in the same order. And it's another should statement. That works for all warrants in this Toolman model. You start with term A, and then you have another should statement. So if you give me a claim, I'll give you the first part of your warrant with no problem. The first part of Dory's warrant is the U.S. state and federal governments. First part of Kelsey's is the Supreme Court. First part of Trey's is the U.S. government. First part of Ashley's is people. Didn't you say? People should hold bystanders accountable, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. The responsible party is people. You're making a general philosophical claim. But now we have a new term, term C. And term C is your value. Like I said, uh, in response to Jeff, he's selling me on educational efficiency, something that I really like. And here, I'm trying to sell my audience on public health. Do we like people to be healthy? Yeah. A number of reasons to like people being healthy. One of the most convincing reasons, I think, is that it's cheap. Cheaper for people to be healthy than to be sick. I mean, most governments are, are not acting, you know, most governments are not trying to provide contraception or other sorts of health care initiatives out of a moral purpose, but out of an economic one. It's cheaper. But you could just be moral and say, hey, we should all be healthy. We're one of the wealthiest nations in the world, why aren't our citizens healthy? So you could sell somebody on health, but term C is your value. Okay, so I've got, so far, A should be. A should C. Somebody tell me what's going on on the grounds. There's no should. B will accomplish C, or B will make C happen. B will lead to C. Term 
term C is repeated, term B is repeated, and basically you're showing a causal relationship between the two. If you adopt B, C will happen. Or C will be more likely to happen, you could say. C is uh, protecting the health of U.S. citizens. So it's the health warrant. So to review, it's a, it's a formula. And like I said, I don't, when I look at your tool and models, when I look at your arguments, when I look at argumentation, period, I don't look at it as ideas. I look at it as structure, as values, almost like math. So A should B, A should C, and then B will cause C. Why should I do B? Because B will lead to C, and you really want C. Why should I allow students to use cell phones? Because allowing cell phones will lead to educational efficiency and higher grades, and that's what you really want. OK, done. If you can prove that those statements are true, then you've sold me on your argument. What piece of this puzzle do you not have yet for you personally? The only thing you don't have is C. You have everything else. Who would like to start? And I'd like a volunteer that has not had help with their claim yet. Todd, you have a claim? Let's uh, we'll just plug through it. I'll fi I'll fix it if necessary. Hmm? Malia, do you have yours? Take it. Then we'll go to Todd next. Penn State should only fire employees directly guilty of a crime. Uh, let's see here. Mitchell, how will her warrant start? Nope, not the United States. Type Penn State should. Yeah, you're, you'll keep going. What's the value that they're achieving? Why? Why should they only fire those people directly guilty of a crime? So what Malia is saying is that um, Joe Paterno was never guilty of molesting children. And Joe Paterno did not fail to inform people. He informed somebody. So he did his job. He's not directly guilty of a crime. So he shouldn't have been fired. Why? Because they should have discerned the people that actually do crime from You're kind of, well, you're actually, Jeff, what you're doing is you're kind of restating the claim. And I'm asking for one step more. Why? Many of you feel strongly about this, and I'm pushing you. Why? So are you telling me that firing people guilty of a crime but not firing those people indirectly related will protect students? Because, oh, okay, so we should look out for the interests of our employees. Is that correct? Um, let me ask you a question here. So many of you um, are probably not really you know, thinking in this mindset because you're not yet out there in the professional world as part of an organization of administration and employees and bosses. But I want you to try to put yourself in that mindset. Do employees, schools, organizations have an obligation, I'm sorry, do employers, schools, organizations have an obligation to their employees to protect them? I would say so. I think that office down there has an obligation to protect you, and that office down there has an obligation to protect me, too. So I believe that that obtains. Penn State should protect its employees. So 
Somebody tell Malia what her grounds statement is. Not you. Hold on a second. Take a look at the example, those of you that wrote down the smoking example. What was the grammatical change in term B? I'm sorry? There was a change. From, speak, speak up, Jay. Illegalizing. Illegalizing. I, it, those of you up on grammar, I changed the verb into a gerund. So the verb can then become subject of a sentence. So what you want to do, Malia, is you want to start with your verb right here. And you want to turn it into a gerund. And that means adding the ing. You also have an only on there. So you might want to qualify it only firing. There you go. Now, now keep going with your, your B term, only firing employees directly guilty of a crime. Will protect employees. Will protect Penn State's employees. Yeah. No, because you don't want to repeat a term more than twice. Okay, that's a good point. Will protect um, Penn State's employees. Okay, good. Um, so now this works. Now this is an intact Toolman model. If she can prove the grounds and she can prove the warrant, the claim follows um, necessarily. So here's here's something uh, a mistake, and I, I love student mistakes because I'd rather have them here in class than on papers. Um, Michael says, "Well, shouldn't I throw Penn State into here?" No, because each term in a Toolman model is only repeated once. That means it appears twice. A, A. If I see A twice, I don't see it again. B, B. If I see B twice, I don't see it again. And then C and C. See it twice, I don't see it again. It's nicely distributed. A twice, B twice, C twice in A, B, A, C, B, C, all three options you have for, for organization there. And now that works. Penn State should protect its employees. Why do we see Penn State again? You might ask. Because the word its means what? Penn State's. So actually, this is not repeating the A term. This is just repeating the C term. Protect its employees. Protect Penn State's employees is the same thing. How do the area? Good. Oh, it's doing its thing again. Sorry. Only during ninth period. I must get tired. Okay, I like this. Um, we need to uh, modify it a little bit, but it's it's basically good. The U.S. federal government should do more to stop African colonies um, from using children in armed forces. First of all, I want you to make a political change. They're no longer colonies. That stopped a while ago. Um, nations. Or actually, um, um, some of them are nations. Some of them are revolutionary forces. Yeah. Uh, African military forces. That way we're talking about government and non-governmental. There you go. OK, the US federal government should do more to stop African military forces from using children in armed forces. Um, same thing that I said about uh, Tyler's at the beginning. It's a little bit vague. Do you want military intervention? Do you want US forces on the ground either in advising or direct action to help stop this. Or another option, sometimes we don't go in alone as the US military. How do we go in? UN or NATO. 
so we could participate in NATO or UN action to help stop this. Um, but we can still do that militarily. Like the, the UN or NATO could go in militarily to, to actually prevent this. Who's that? Why am I not familiar with that acronym? What is it? Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, but the basic point is, Todd, do you want us to participate in military action? Or do you want to do it by um, diplomatically negotiating with their governments? Okay. The U.S. federal government should pursue diplomatic options. Pursue diplomatic options. Uh, dip oh, pursue. P U R S U E. It's okay. Pursue U E. That's so, diplomatic options. Good. All right. Uh, let's see, Patrick. How will uh, how will my grounds start, Patrick? Type pursuing diplomatic options. And then give me an ellipse, dot, space, dot, space, dot, space. Yeah, because we don't need the whole thing. It's, it's lengthy. Jason, how will my warrant begin? Um, US federal government should. U.S. federal government should. I want you to type that. As I said, if you have your argument claim, you already have this much. We only need the C term. Why? Why should we do this? We have an obligation to protect the children of other nations besides our own? Protect innocent civilians internationally. And I, I don't, we're not worried about spelling. Um, I want you to change citizens to civilians, though, because it actually means something different. Because the civilians means non-military personnel. There you go. Um, let's see, Alex, what's the rest of my grounds? You basically got the right idea, Alex. That's correct. However, what I want to do is try to keep the language as consistent as possible. You've got the right idea, but let's make sure that we're just repeating ourselves. So it should make it simple. Pursuing diplomatic options will protect innocent civilians internationally. It's basically what you said, but we're using the same language as from the warrant. Uh, internationally. So. Todd, well, actually, not necessarily Todd. We received the C term suggestion from the rest of the class. But Todd is now stating through this argument that guess what? The US should work to protect children around the world. And if we do this, we'll be meeting that obligation. Homework's not due tomorrow. I will uh, give you the homework assignment for Thursday. So we'll do more workshopping on this. You want to write yours? You must write two with different C terms. Uh, yeah, six statements total, two Toolman models total. Yep. Yep. No, no, no. Everything will be the same except for the C term. So the only thing that I want you to have two different reasons for pursuing. Okay? So everything will be the same except for C.